sponsored by CuriosityStream. Get access to my streaming video service, Nebula, when you sign up at curiositystream.com slash Rene Ritchie. Now, Apple's got a brand new iPhone SE and it starts at just $399. Subscribe and you'll never miss my reviews. I've already compared it to the iPhone XR and iPhone 11 because I figured that's what most potential customers would do. But a bunch of you have asked me to also put it head to head against the iPhone 8. Either because you're considering the upgrade or you're wondering if getting a discounted iPhone 8 from a carrier or big box store may be an even better deal than a new iPhone SE and price just isn't always the same as value. So I'm Rene Ritchie and this is the new iPhone SE versus the iPhone 8. Design is easy here. Design is a draw, kinda, because the new iPhone SE is based on the old iPhone 8 chassis. They're almost identical, almost. The new iPhone SE ditches the word iPhone on the back and drops the Apple logo down to the middle to balance it out. Also to make it consistent with the new iPhone 11, which have bigger camera bumps at the top. And I like this new branding better. Like I said in my review, it's less, which isn't just more confident on Apple's part, it's cleaner for us. Is it odd that Apple didn't change any of the design more than that? Well. Not really. See, when Apple designs a phone, they don't just design the phone, they design the machines that make the phone, and then they outfit a whole assembly system with those machines, which is expensive, especially at first. Over time though, it all gets paid down and becomes not very expensive at all. That means as long as Apple doesn't change anything significant, it stays not very expensive at all. In other words, moving the Apple logo down, fine. Changing the bezels or chamfering the edges, expensive which is the exact opposite of what Apple wanted to do with the 399 iPhone SE. Both the new iPhone SE and old iPhone 8 have the same 4.7 inch LED backlit LCD display, both in retina density, which means it's hard to see the individual pixels at a regular viewing distance, and P3 wide gamut, which means deeper reds and lusher greens. The only real difference here is that the iPhone 8 also comes in a larger version, the iPhone 8 Plus with a 5.5 inch display. The iPhone SE, at least for now, only comes in the standard 4.7 inch size. So if you do want bigger, you're gonna have to go with the iPhone 8 Plus. Again, at least for now. Home buttons and Touch ID are also easy because they're also identical. Both have Apple's iPhone 7 era virtual home buttons and second generation Touch ID fingerprint identity sensor. That makes them super reliable, and super fast, and both work exactly the same. The colors on the new iPhone SE and old iPhone 8 are slightly different. The SE is white instead of silver and black instead of space gray, both of which I also like better because they also just look cleaner. And there's a product red version of the SE instead of a gold iPhone 8. The iPhone 8 did get a red version six months after it debuted and I liked it enough to buy it because red. And I like the new iPhone SE in red as well, mostly because the glass goals just never clicked for me the same way the metal ones did on the iPhone 6 through 7. Lastly, the faceplate on the white iPhone SE is now black as well. On the iPhone 8, the silver and gold versions had white faceplates, the space gray and red black. Now I know some people prefer the white in general or because it looks brighter or find it less claustrophobic for reading text on white backgrounds. I like them both, but black does help make the bezels melt away for videos, especially for movies. Now here's where things get very different. The iPhone 8 has Apple's A11 Bionic, the exact same chipset that shipped with the iPhone 10 in 2017. The new iPhone SE has Apple's A13 Bionic, the exact same chipset that ships with the iPhone 11 in 2019. And yeah, exact same, not underclocked, not slowed down or missing or lesser than in any way. And that brings me to a quick word on benchmarks. It's totally cool to download an app, tap a button, and get a general sense of the relative performance of a device. But real benchmarking, the kind that should make or amplify headlines, should be left for the people who code those apps or the science types that work for places like Nantech. Everything from battery to radio state to room temperature affects benchmarking, which is why I personally leave the serious stuff to the serious engineers. Anyway, there are several major differences between the A11 and the A13. The A11 Bionic has four 1.42 gigahertz Mistral high efficiency cores, two 2.39 gigahertz Monsoon high performance cores, three Apple custom GPU cores, and Apple's first ever neural engine, at least in its very nascent form. All fabricated at 10 nanometers, where the smaller that number is, generally the better performance and lower the heat and power you get. The A13 Bionic has four 1.73 gigahertz Thunder high efficiency cores, two 2.65 gigahertz Lightning high performance cores with machine learning accelerators called AMX blocks on those two cores. 
It's also got four Apple custom GPU cores and a new eight core fully formed neural engine, all fabricated at seven nanometers under that lower is generally better rule. I believe it's also got a next generation performance controller, which is like the cherry on top of Apple's secret silicon sundae. You know what I mean here. Also, the new iPhone SE has three gigabytes of RAM to the iPhone 8's two gigabytes. All that to say, the A13 can do far, far more for far longer in the same chassis and around the same power consumption levels as the A11. So everything will feel quicker and more responsive day to day. It'll handle more complex filters and AR experiences more smoothly, quicker, and for longer. But it'll also handle app and operating system updates for three to five years longer. Which means if you have or get an iPhone 8 today, you're looking at updates until about 2021 or 2022. Just like the 2015 iPhone 6S was updated to iOS 13 in 2019. If you get a new iPhone SE today, you're looking at updates until about 2024 or 2025. And the longer out that goes, the bigger the difference makes. Because the A13 Bionic in the new iPhone SE is seven nanometers instead of 10 nanometers and generally more advanced, even though it's faster and has more cores, it's also more efficient, which means average battery life ends up being about the same as the iPhone 8. According to Apple, the iPhone SE will tap out after about 13 hours of video playback, same as the iPhone 8. It can just flex way, way harder when it needs to during that time. To show the other end of the extreme, I ran both the new iPhone SE and iPhone 8 on Pokemon Go, which is GPS and data and graphics and max brightness, pretty much everything that can kill a battery as fast as possible. And they were neck and neck the entire time, every hour on the hour, dropping down to the same exact percentages. And so yeah, total draw, but again, with one having far greater potential performance than the other. Also, both coming with the same USB-A 5 watt charger in the box, which is so 2014. But they can also both use the more powerful USB-A chargers if you wanna buy them. The iPhone SE is also optimized for much faster charging on the 18 watt USB-C charger. Again, if you wanna buy it. And they both support inductive charging on standard Qi compliant inductive chargers. Where the iPhone 8 supported LTE Advanced, the new iPhone SE supports gigabit LTE. That's also single SIM on the iPhone 8 and dual SIM, one physical, one eSIM on the new iPhone SE. Where the iPhone 8 supported 802.11ac, or what even is that, Wi-Fi 5? The iPhone SE supports 802.11ax, or Wi-Fi 6. Where the iPhone 8 supported Bluetooth 5, the iPhone SE supports also Bluetooth 5, but you get the idea. If you move between multiple carriers, dual SIM is a real benefit. The rest depends on which carriers and what kind of router you have, whether you'll see any real world improvements or not, but the potential is there. In terms of hardware, the new iPhone SE and iPhone 8 cameras are identical. Same 12 megapixel F1.8 optically stabilized 4K 60 frames per second wide angle on the back, same seven megapixel F2.2 1080p 30 frames per second selfie on the front, except Except the old iPhone 8 has the A11 image signal processor to handle those photos. And the new iPhone SE has the A13 image signal processor to handle these photos. And yeah, oh my, George Takei style, what a difference those two generations of silicon make. The end result is that the iPhone SE just shoots circles around the iPhone 8. It shoots better than the iPhone XR in most situations as well, falling roughly equal only in low light. I even like some of what it does better than the Pixel 4, which is consistently cooler and contrastier, as is Google's want. That's thanks to things like second generation Smart HDR, which stacks multiple exposures and uses things like semantic rendering to pull out the best image possible. It also ties in those improvements and the neural engine. So unlike the iPhone 8, the iPhone SE does full on portrait mode, including all portrait lighting effects front and back. Now, you can get portrait mode on the iPhone 8 Plus thanks to its dual camera system, but at a slightly higher price and bigger screen size. The iPhone SE can also do extended dynamic range on video up to 4K 30 frames per second, which is the same as the iPhone XR. If all you care about is the gram or the talk, you may not see a big difference. But if you want the best possible photos of your family, your pets, your life preserved for future you, you're always gonna want the best photos and video you can get and that's most definitely the new iPhone SE. Pricing on the iPhone SE is stone stump simple. It's 399 US for 64 gigabytes, just $50 more for 128 gigabytes and $100 more than that for 256 gigabytes. Apple Care Plus is also just $79.
That price can be more, much more internationally, which totally sucks, but is true of most of Apple's current product line. Pricing on the iPhone 8 depends a lot on where you're looking. You can find them secondhand on Gazelle or Amazon starting at around $300 for 64 gigabytes for excellent condition. You can get them cheaper through Craigslist or eBay. If you're willing to put in some work and sometimes risk things like water damage you can't easily see. You can also find some really good deals from carriers in big boxes that are still selling out their existing stock, sometimes discounted. So I'll sum things up in just a hot second, but first I wanna tell you about my new podcast. You can grab the audio version in your favorite podcast player every week, but you can also watch the full on video versions when they come out early even on Nebula. Nebula is the streaming video platform I'm building alongside other independent creators like Legal Eagle, Thomas Frank, Real Engineering, Sarah Z, Lindsay Ellis, and many, many more. And we're building it for things precisely like these podcast episodes, which I love to do, but which the YouTube algorithm would just utterly destroy and likely hurt the whole channel at the same time. On Nebula though, we're free to experiment to do stuff exactly like this. And now, because Nebula comes bundled with CuriosityStream, you also get access to its thousands of documentaries and series by people like David Attenborough and Chris Hatfield, and which, wait for it, is right now offering an absolutely incredible deal. 40% off annual subscriptions and gift cards. And that makes it, yeah, just $11.99 for the entire year. The entire year. And that's so you can stay curious, stay entertained, and stay engaged while we're all just here staying at home. Go to curiositystream.com slash Renee Ritchie for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series. And now Nebula as well. Enter the promo code Renee Ritchie to start your membership completely free for the first 31 days. Thanks Curiosity Stream, and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. So my recommendation is this, if you already have an iPhone 8 and it's fine and you're fine with it, stick with it. If you don't and you need to upgrade, go with the new iPhone SE because it's simply the better upgrade and you'll be able to stick with it for longer. There'll always be something new and something next. So buy when you absolutely need to buy and then enjoy the hell out of what you bought. At least that's what I think, but now I wanna hear from you. Hit like, hit subscribe if you haven't already, ring that bell gizmo so YouTube will actually tell you when new episodes go live, then hit up the comments and let me know. iPhone 8 or new iPhone SE, which one do you recommend and why? Thanks for watching and here's a complete playlist of super detailed iPhone videos for you.